something about it, because if he doesn't agree with what is supposed to be, then do something about it. Stop whining. Um, so, my question is, what do we know about anything, really? You know? Do you know what makes that atom that atom? You know what I mean? Like, we don't know anything, and yet, we have lives based on definitions. And what makes a definition is that people agree upon something. Yes, right? Or is it? Because you were taught language. You didn't agree on anything that you were taught when you were taught male, man, woman, man, etc. So you just have to kind of think about how we don't really fit those definitions anymore. And like any other invention, language is art, you know, like it's a human invention. Like the wheel. And the wheel became right now cars and rockets and you know the thing that's floating up in space. But yet we still have the same words. You know what I mean? Like we haven't we have added vocabulary, but I don't think we have changed it that much. And it serves a purpose, you know, at a point in time some words, but there's just some stuff that we need to change in order to really be defined by them. Like the word women, human. Like a lot of people call themselves human, I'm like, I'm not that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just think of people that you don't want to name. And they call themselves human, I was like, I don't think so. You know what I mean? A um, bunch of other stuff, so woman, man, lesbian, gay, what the fuck does any mean? Um, we learned language, but technically, we didn't get consent to it. And we just have to kind of, for practicality, just keep using it. Our society defines things like everything's final, like the final knowledge of that thing. It's just what a woman is, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. And I wonder, because of the community that I'm surrounding myself with lately, well, lately, but you know, I've always been there, um, I, want, I question these things like what does it mean to be human, woman, man, lesbian, gay, trans, this, that? You know, we have parts. We have. Parts. <laughs> Just parts, you know, physical parts we have, but we have categories for other parts, like emotional parts, and spiritual parts, and chemical parts, and all kinds of parts. But, uh, you know, we're more than... Yeah? Right? Can you agree with me because I'm, I'm, I'm alone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so, so society's like, so what are you gonna do with that? What are we gonna do with the rest of what we are, you know what I mean? Like, why do we have to define our lives based on that particular body part, like I get it, but I don't. And my, <laughs> um, so we have to pick, I guess we have to pick between like hetero, lesbian, bi, gay, trans, gender non-conforming, binary, non-binary, non-conforming, binary, curious, gender phobic. Like, what? Those words, people throw them at me, I'm sometimes like, I feel so dumb right now, like, I don't know how. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. But I get it, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when, you know, I'll try to pick. When I'm with people, I create a connection with them. I feel maybe sometimes with some people, physical connection. Some people I feel a spiritual connection. Some people I feel an emotional connection. And sometimes I'm attracted to this you know, bearer of the connection. And I want to maybe, like sometimes, bang that. You know what I mean? And I'm like, so, <laughs> we're gonna be so quick consent, of course, and, you know, uh, clear consent. And in my experience, I've only been able to make a connection with people that have the male part. You know what I mean? Like, what's my attraction, the reason of my attraction, the fact that they have the part or was set by natural wire, you know, like I question these things because they don't make any sense anymore, you know? Um, so your biological wiring has something to do with it, but also your conditioning. And I was conditioned. I grew up, sidebar, uh, Puerto Rican, 80s and 90s, patriarch of Puerto Rico, only daughter of three, of a mother who was the only daughter of four, of a guy that was in the military in Puerto Rico fighting crazy. You know, like, that was what I was told. And to be a woman in that world, it was like, yeah, 
you are attracted to the male party, but not until you're married. <laughs> Otherwise, if that male part hurt you, then you brought it up to yourself. Like if so, don't be a skank. Uh, figure it out. And I'm like, what? Like that's the long story short. And I'm like, no, the dog that kind of doesn't believe anything, so I just don't listen to that anymore. <laughs> My point is, <laughs> I felt attraction to many people's like categories, emotional, modern, spiritual, physical, some of them. And <laughs> sometimes I think back and I, I know that I had that attraction to women, but I was brought up to also say, no, that's wrong. You're going to hell. And you're like, it's just my friend, you know what I'm doing. And I can't help that to think also different, shame-wise and guilt-wise, if I had been brought up in an environment that was fluid about that. I was like, you know, no expectations for your parts and your entire life because of that part. And I still wonder, like, what's going to happen to my life when I come to terms, when I invite you to think about that, like, can you come to terms with the reality of what you've been driven to, like, that kind of natural instinct? Um, and the fact is that, that my life would be different. Um, but it's not because I'm mean, scared that it means something. You know, like, ooh, ooh, I like a girl. Or I like, you know, a girl, whatever, you know what I mean? And I'm like, it, don't, it only means a connection. That's really what it only means, that I felt something. And <laughs> I know that we want to define that connection, but this is my problem. A lot of people say, divide it, so you can understand it, so you can do it. And I'm more into like, we know too much right now, and I'd rather like feel and explore a spectrum of our layers, you know, like, this is what happens physically, this is what happens emotionally, and just explore it and then figure out what it means, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The, the, the idea that it, when something's defined, it's final, makes people believe these definitions. Um, society can do a lot of damage with the definition, you know what I'm saying? Um, be a man, be a woman. A woman don't open her legs like that, close your legs. Don't cry, you're a man. You know, shit like that is like, really? Like, I'm tired of dragging along these definitions that no longer really define half of the people I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel defined by the language that we were handed now? Think about it. Like, I'm just asking you, please. Um, so we don't need all this. What I think we need, and I hope it's part of the change, is like a shift in paradigm, where we see definitions as incomplete things, that they can always evolve, three dots at the end. So far, what we know what this is, Women do this, women do You know what I'm saying? Like, can we change the way that we see the words? Because they were handed down to us. When was the word woman and man invented? Can you remember? You didn't agree on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get it, but you don't. Anyhow. <laughs> um, yeah. We don't really know anything about it, but, you know, we're working on it. And if we're open to re-evaluating these meanings, sorry for that, <laughs> then <laughs> we can agree upon new understandings of these things, I guess. Um, but we cannot impose a way of life based on a definition. It's also what I'm trying to get, because we're evolving constantly. And we're much more in our badassery potential it's real lit. Look at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at you. How far have you come by just shedding off these, you know, layers of old language? Um, how are they holding us back? How much do they represent, and I'm talking about language, the language of the oppressor? You know what I mean? Like, how much the language that we use is still the language that was designed to keep these things the way they are for the oppressor? And you're like, Okay, it's enough. So, 
We have to lead our lives with these images of language to understand the world around us and guide us. And there is power in language because it's art, obviously. But right now, we know too damn much to keep thinking like these stories of culture and, you know, hand-me-down ideas. And I feel that, yeah, it is a crazy world that we have to change. But I'm, I'm up to the challenge and I feel like the queerer I become and the queerer the people around me are, I feel a miracle, you know, because for you and I, my weird, weird, beautiful friend, to exist in this backwards ass reality, I really think it's a miracle. When I do what I do in this town, I see all of y'all do this stuff, and me, anybody that gets it, is like, wow, it's beautiful, I love it. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna change things if, and this is where organized religion has us by the here, by the here. They're organized, okay? They go places and they talk to each other about everything that they want to change in the world for their little purposes, and some of it is okay, you know, some of it is you can draw out of good from everywhere. But they're organized, so we have to get organized. If we have, other sometimes it's like, yeah, let me share this, let me push this button, oh, I changed the world. Got news for you. You didn't change it. You know, you gotta do, you gotta connect with the people. And I think that this is where art comes in. Art has the ability to break the veil of misunderstandings and connect feeling, emotion. You don't need an interpreter for art, for the beauty that people create sometimes. You don't need 